Well, hello there, listener. It looks to me like I spotted myself a fellow collector. Now, I know I like to collect things like posters and t-shirts and action figures of all my favorite video games and TV shows. And Loot Crate makes that possible. And if you're a fan of this show, I know you love all things Fallout. And Loot Crate has a very specific Fallout type crate. And if you want to take 15% off of your order, head on over to the link in the show notes below and enter Robots Radio at checkout. That's LootCrate.com. Robots Radio presents... Broadcast, a Fallout story. Um, Daddy? Well, if it isn't my sweet, delicate little flower. Tell me, Lily, what is on that beautiful little mind of yours? Well, I'm not really sure how to ask you this question, but, um, who is Santa? (laughs) Lily, where did you hear of such a person? Oh, it was no one. I just heard a long time ago someone mention a man named Santa, who only comes around here in the cold months. (sighs) My dear daughter, you need not to worry about such fairy tales. Ah, seriously, your head is always in the clouds. Just know this, that this Santa person, it's it's all nonsense. And it's yet another example of the things we can add to chaos. But Daddy, he doesn't sound like chaos to me. He sounds like a good man. I heard he brings toys and stuff to people. Nonsense, Lily. There is nothing and no one good or given in this entire world except for the great strangler heart. And you know this because the scriptures say so. Now, go away from me with this ridiculous conversation and bring your mind to things that matter. Yes, sir. I'll go see if Mr. Harold needs any help with his workshop. Good morning, Mr. Harold. Why, hello there, little Miss Lily, and how are you today? I'm good. I just figured I'd drop in to see if you needed any help here in your shop today. Well, ain't that peachy. Well, yes, ma'am. In fact, it would be a big help if you could help me sort out those screws and bobby pins over there on the table. Yes, sir. I can certainly do that. I just love to organize and sort stuff out. Daddy says our tent is only as clean as it is because of how good I do the sorting. (laughs) Well, then, I'm in good hands this morning, then. Um, Mr. Harold, could I ask you a question? Certainly, Miss Lily. Go right ahead. I'm all ears. So, I was asking my dad earlier today about a man named Santa Claus... But Daddy didn't seem too happy that I was asking him. Well, yes, I can understand. Your daddy's not one to really enjoy talking about people or traditions from the old days. But why not? From what I've read, Santa seems like the best man in the whole wide world. Read? What do you mean you've read? Our libraries don't mention anything from the old world except for the scriptures. Can you keep a secret, Mr. Harold? Well, uh... I suppose so. 
You see, I got this really cool book from... Um, well, let's just say I found it. It's got really cool pictures in it and tells a really neat story about a man named Grognak and his girlfriend Lady Grognak. I like her a lot. In fact, I want to be brave just like her. <laughs> Why, that's a comic book. I used to collect those things before the big bombs, I, I mean Great Purge, happened. How in the world did you end up with that? Well, like I said, I found it. <laughs> hmm, that sounds fishy to me. <laughs> but it's no matter to me, I guess. So there's a Santa Claus in this comic book you got? Uh-huh, there sure is. Well, he's not exactly in the story. There's a page towards the end of the book that has him on it, and it says, December means Christmas time, so why not write a letter to Santa at the North Pole? Wherever that is. Actually, I've got the book right here in my bag if you want to look at it. Oh my, this is an old book. This actual issue was printed 30 years before the Great Purge. Okay, well then, let's take a look at the page you're talking about. Hmm, let's see. Ho, ho, ho. It's December, and that means Christmas time. So why not write your own letter to Santa Claus all the way in the North Pole? Let him know you've been a good girl or boy. And tell him what presents you want. <laughs> well, Miss Lily, this here's just an advertisement. I used to stick these all over the place, on giant boards near the road, and even inside magazines and comic books. Well, it says December means Christmas, but what is Christmas? Christmas used to be a holiday that we would celebrate every December. It ended up getting out of hand for some places during this time, everyone fighting and rushing just to get to the next latest and greatest gadget or toy. It's a bit ironic that a time that was meant to represent joy and giving ended up representing bitterness and taking. Joy and giving? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know if I should be filling your noggin with all this. Your daddy probably wouldn't like me telling you about all this stuff. Please, Mr. Harold. I promise I won't tell him you told me. This all just seems so <laughs> amazing. Please, please, please. Oh, all right. Hold your horses, little missy. No need to get all out of sorts. Yay! Okay, I promise I'll calm down. Uh, well, where should I start? You see, way back, a long time ago, we used to celebrate a time called... Christmas? <laughs> yep, Christmas. And this time of year was supposed to be a time to end the year with a bit of joy and happiness before the new year began. People would even gather and sing songs, eat a big feast, and even give presents. Songs? Presents? Oh, this definitely sounds like my kind of thing. All right, all right, calm down now. Remember, you promised. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'll calm down starting right now. <laughs> okay, now. Where was I? Presents. Oh, yeah, the presents. Yes, we'd give out presents to the people we love just to tell them how much more we loved them. You, you see, Christmas uh, was supposed to represent a time of giving and not just giving toys or tools or things. People would oftentimes give a helping hand. They'd offer to cook food for people who couldn't cook for themselves. Uh, some people even used to dress up like that Santa Claus and raise money for people that didn't have much. But it wasn't long before big stores started taking advantage of Christmas time. They used things, like that advertisement in your comic book, to make people think that Christmas was about getting instead of giving. And slowly, over time, people started fighting over stuff. Little kids started disobeying their parents and demanding the newest toys. Eventually, I believe it was that attitude that had some part in how this old world ended up. What do you mean? Well, I'm talking about the Great Purge. You see, the world we live in, it's is like it is because people were focused on getting instead of giving. And in that mindset of wanting and getting, the only thing they were given was what destroyed the old world. Well, I like the idea of Christmas, well before all the fighting and stuff. I like making people laugh and happy. I like giving presents. <laughs> and I like getting them, too. <laughs> I also love singing and eating good food with our friends. Those are things to love, little Miss Lily. 
and I think we need to have some Christmas here. It is December, after all. That can't be much of a coincidence, can it? Now, Lily, your daddy would not allow anything of that sort around here. Sure he would. We sing all the time, we eat all the time, and sometimes we even give presents. Why not do that all at once? We don't have to call it Christmas. We can just do all the things that are in Christmas. Oh, I don't know. I mean, sure, the things that Christmas used to be about are good and all, I'm just not sure Bishop would be too thrilled with the idea that it was inspired by an old world holiday. Well, the rest of you all don't have to do it, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna make lemonade for everyone in camp, and I'm gonna find my daddy the biggest, bestest present. You just wait and see. I'll even get you a present too, Mr. Harold. Well, okay. (laughs) I guess there wouldn't be no harm in it. You can go do all that later. Let's focus on getting this stuff sorted and organized. I'm sorry, Mr. Harold, but this is all going to take too much time. I need to hurry up and get out there and find some presents and get the ingredients for my lemonade. Bye, Mr. Harold. Oh, dear. Well, looks like I'm working later tonight. Well, I've been fishing for some pirates. I've been fishing here all day. Oh, I've been fishing for some pirates. My singing's probably scared them all the way. Wait. What in the Sam Hill... Davy Crockett, Grognak, and the Lord Jesus is that headed this way. (laughs) Well, by God, that's a damn Mr. Handy. (laughs) Well, shit, that there ain't a sight you'd see every day. Well, that thing's dragging along a man behind him, it looks like. My God, Master Brian! I know you're unconscious and can't really contribute to this in any way whatsoever, but you, sir, are making this journey all too difficult for me. I swear I'm starting to wish your mother had never programmed my service parameters for taking care of you. Uh, excuse me there, Mr. Metalhead. Oh, dear. You seem to have startled me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I never meant to make you shit lightning. (laughs) I just never seen a robot dragging a man before. Um, is he pushing up daisies? Pushing up daisies? Well, I believe I would say no, sir, as he's unconscious. He can't be pushing up any daisies, can he? (laughs) I forget y'all don't understand some slangs and certain lingos. I meant, is he dead? Oh, I do apologize. No, sir, he is merely just passed out due to excessive blood loss and a minor infection due to a gunshot wound. I was able to do a decent job with stitching and sterilizing the wound. He should return to consciousness within the next few hours or days. Well, why in the hell are you working on this man for anyhow? He your owner? Uh, Yes, it would appear so. (laughs) Well, tickle my titties and tell me it's Tuesday. I ain't never seen a robot slave, neither. I mean, I've seen robots designed to work before, but I ain't never seen no robot slave. I beg your pardon, sir, but I am no slave. My service parameters have been designed to just stay and serve him as he needs me. Yep. Sounds like a slave to me. Anyhow... Where are you headed off to with him? Well, if you must know, the last known address I have on file for him is in his home of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So I'm taking him there. Ooh, buddy. Trust me, you won't want to be heading over that way. <sighs> and why would that be, sir? Well, you must not get out much, rivet tits. You see, over there in Point Pleasant, there's a group of loony toony type people. They call themselves the cult of the Mothman or whatever. And even though they're a bit on the loony side, they ain't the nicest people to be around. 
Meaning, them there's gonna shoot you on sight. Well, isn't that just lovely? No, not really. I mean, them there people are the type you wanna avoid any way you can. It's best just to sneak away quickly and get the hell out of Dodge. Well, this sure puts a strain on our situation. I've been dragging Master Brian for at least 65 miles, all headed to the only place I know of on record. Oh, dear. Now what am I supposed to do? Well, I got an idea. Y'all can come stay with me in my camp. Well, until he wakes up. I got some good stuff stored up. I even traded for some fresh meds. That might even give that old boy yours a good kickstart. And where would this camp be located? Oh, shit, it ain't too far. It's just up the road there, a few hundred feet, and off into the woods. I suppose that would be fine. I mean, we really have no other choice at the moment. Well, great. Won't y'all just come on in and follow me? Um, excuse me, sir, but you're not going to get very far in that wheelchair. As a matter of fact, how did you even get anywhere in that thing? <laughs> what, this old thing? No, it ain't much of a bother. See, I lost my legs in a logging accident back before them big old bombs fell, and I managed to get around all right. Trust me, fella, I'll be all right. Oh, dear. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. Oh my, this really is quite the homestead you have here. There's so much crap, I mean scrap, everywhere. Ah, I know it. It's heaven, ain't it? Heaven isn't quite the word I was thinking of. Yep, I sure do love collecting all kinds of random trash and garbage. Did you know that you can make anything... Well, out of anything. Is that so? Yep. Just last year, I took a part of fella that looked, well, like you. And I made myself a remote control junk gatherer. That is, until the power core overheated and he scattered his screws, metal, and wiring, well, all over the place. But, if I learned anything from that, it's... You gotta always regulate the heat from the fusion cores. Cause if you don't, ka-plow-wee! Uh, ka plow Oh dear, maybe I made a mistake coming here. Oh, don't let that story scare you. That Mr. Handy, he was already a lost cause. I just found him. I didn't kill him if that's what you're worried about. No, I only work with dead robots. <laughs> Well, I suppose that's somewhat a comforting statement. Well, all right then. Won't you just take that fella you've been dragging? Put him up on that table over there. I'm sure I got some stuff here that'll give him the kick in the nuts to wake up. Let's see if I can find that. Well, shit, where's that at? Ah, oh, here it is. Yes. Ain't nothing better at getting the central nervous system kicking like some good, freshly made psycho buff. If this don't wake him up, I don't know what we're gonna do. Alrighty. Here goes nothing. <gasps> oh, what? What the? Where the hell am I? Ooh, doggy. I knew that shit right there would work. Master Brian! Master Brian, good heavens! You're alive. I knew it all along. Master? How? What's going on? The last thing I remember is walking into Vault Tech University. 
Yes, sir. After you passed out, I took a blood sample to see the severity of your infection. Then your DNA registered in my diagnostic scans, and my ownership parameters changed to you, sir. Well, hold it right there. You mean to tell me y'all came all the way from VTU? Well, saddle up Sally and sell me some sugar. That right there is quite the hike. <clears throat> Who are you? This is... Well, actually, I never got your name. Name's Boone. B-O-O-N-E. I'm named after the greatest tracker that there ever was. Daniel Boone. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> That's nice, I guess. Can someone please tell me where the hell we are? We're about 35 miles from your home in Point Pleasant, sir. Point Pleasant? Why the hell are we going there? See? Told you. Ain't nobody wants to get over there in that neck of the woods. Well, it's the last known address I have on file for you, sir. You were unconscious, and I didn't know what else to do. Great. Just great. That puts me even further away from Omega. Omega? Well, hells, bells, and whistles. I knowed your voice sounded familiar. You're that there fella telling stories over the radio. Hot damn. If I'm being honest, I am quite confused. Um, Omega is where I live now. It's sort of a small settlement that I developed. Well, if I had known that, sir, we would be headed that way. As a matter of fact, I think we should be on our way there right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just wait a second. Yeah, you need to settle down there, lug nuts. He ain't in the best sort of shape to be moving. And if I was a betting man, I'd say he ain't too keen on the idea of being dragged no more, neither. Uh, yeah. What, what he said. Oh, dear. I do apologize. I just want to do what is right by you, sir. Well, <clears throat> for the moment, I, I think it's best that we stay right here on this table. Boone, do you have any food or water? <laughs> My throat is dry, and I feel like I should at least try to eat something. Oh, hell yeah. I got some freshly, well, semi-freshly cooked mole rat chunks, and I got one hell of a Nuka-Cola stash. Y'all do like Nuka-Cola, don't you? <laughs> Tell me you've got a Nuka cherry, and I'll be great. Brother... I ain't just got one. Well, yeah, I, I, I got one. You know, it's quite a relief to meet someone who isn't out to kill me. Kill you? No, I ain't about all that. I like building stuff. I ain't about breaking stuff. Except robots. Oh, come on now, Chrome Dome. If I was going to dismantle you, I'd have done it back when I first met you. Oh, jolly. Well, that's good to hear. It is, ain't it? <clears throat> so, Boone, how long have you been out here? Oh, um, I've been here in this camp close to four years. <laughs> it's funny, because I've seen all these people just running by... Moving back and forth, shooting and carrying on, but nobody's never seen me. Must be the wheelchair. Or the fact that I got this place disguised pretty damn good. Four years? Wow. Uh, okay, so, um, since you brought it up, I, I don't mean for this to come across as rude or anything, but how have you survived this long on your own? You know, you know, being in a wheelchair and all. Well, Master Brian, that there's the million dollar question, ain't it? <laughs> no, it ain't that hard for me. Like I said, most people don't even notice I'm around. And the ones that do, they end up trading some good shit with me. So I'm able to make all that cool stuff that you see around you. Plus, being the inventor that I am, I was able to fashion me some walking legs 
help get me around. I just reprogrammed the schematics for an old power armor chassis, cut the legs down, and voila. Wait a second. You've made all of this stuff? Yep. With my own bare hands, I did. Man, this is some really creative work. Why, thank you, bud. I must say, I am also quite impressed. Where did you learn to do all of this? Well, if you must know, I was the lead engineer for the Army back before the war. I did a lot of programming in the T-60 armor suits. I also had a little bit of my hand in the early pit boy programming. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, not bragging or nothing, but if you want it, I can probably build it. I do a lot of weapon modding, too. That's where most of my trading happens. People wandering through, well, they stumble through here, and if they got the right stuff on them, I sure as hell can fix them up. So do you think that you could fix and maybe clean up an old damaged holotape? Fix it? <laughs> Not only could I fix it, um, yeah, I, I-, I could fix it. Oh, <laughs> that's great news. Uh, see, I've got this old holotape back at Omega with a friend, and... He's been able to get most of it cleaned up and working, but he said he needed a bit more time to clean it up and a, a few other things. You think you might could collaborate with him and get it working? Well, what's on it? Um, it's a message from my mom. She left me instructions on it, how to find her. and uh, Like I said, we got most of the message unscrambled, but from the looks of it, there's a bit more on it. It's... The only thing that I have to know or give me some sort of hope that she's alive or not. Um, Master Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, what's up? Well, when you passed out the other day, I took your blood sample. A live transmission came through my internal sensor beacon. Okay, what was it? Well, sir, it was your mother. Wait, did you say live? Yes, sir. She was broadcasting through a one-way channel from Washington, D.C. Uh, th- that's that's great news. S- so do you have it? Well, sir, that's the issue. While my internal mainframe does back up all transmissions, I have no way of accessing it. Well, that is unless you power me down and do a manual recovery. <laughs> Doggy, I know I can do it. Huh. Yes, I'm sure you can. Hang on, hang on. What do you mean, manual recovery? Oh, oh, I do hate that my honesty levels are set to true. Well, sir, it's a bit of a delicate and complicated situation. It would require an entire disassembly of my lower half. This would expose my mainframe and allow you to link my hard drive with that of an access terminal, or even a portable computer, like that Pip-Boy you have on your wrist. Like I said, I can do it, no problem. Are are you sure you can do it, Boone? Oh, hell yeah, dude. And not only will I be able to put him back together for you, I can modify all the boring parts of him and make him one kick-ass, handy-dandy servant robot. Now, wait one moment. You're not seriously considering letting this... this junkyard animal disassemble me, are you? Well... Master Brian, how could you? Hang on, hang on. I didn't say yes exactly. You didn't have to, sir. Your face said it for you. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, tell me, is there any other way to recover that transmission? <sighs> Once again, damn you, honesty levels. No, sir, there is no other way. <sighs> damn it. Well, okay, well, let me just think on it for just a second. Just for a second? Listen, y'all. Why don't y'all take the night to think it over? I got plenty of food and drinks, all kinds of supplies. I got a fresh tent and sleeping cot stowed away over. There's no need to make a hasty decision just yet. Besides, Brian, you need to rest some more. Let them wounds recover anyway. Although I don't like it, that is the most reasonable suggestion you have made so far, Mr. Boone. Well, I appreciate that, lug nuts. Now, won't y'all just come over here by the fire, get comfy, and Brian, 
You can tell me all about how you got yourself in the situations and how you ended up looking like you do. All right, cool. Uh, Sounds good to me, I guess. It's where you belong. It's where you belong. I just love that song so, so much. I wonder what Mr. Brian is up to. You know what? While I'm out here, I should look for a present for him, too. Well, just in case I ever see him again. I mean, I really should give him something back. He did give me this amazing book. Let's see. Where was I up to last time when I was reading it? Oh yeah, page 12. Now listen here, you bat babies. This jungle isn't your territory. And just like that, blam! Grognak lifted his mighty axe and slammed it into the vines that were slowly growing around his feet. Shriek! A loud cry rang out from the caves, and all of a sudden a thick fog and black cloud formed. (laughs) Now that is a neat story. Oh, You scared me, mister. Oh, I'm sorry, little girl. I never meant to frighten you. It's okay. I'm all good now. Hey, that's a Santa Claus hat you're wearing. (laughs) Yup, it sure is. It's Christmas time, don't you know? Now tell me, little girl, what are you doing out here all by yourself? Well, actually, I just found out it was Christmas time. I'm out here looking for a cool present to give my daddy and the people back at our camp. Your camp? Now, where would that be exactly? Um, well, I think it's back over that way. Uh, no, that's not right. Maybe I'm thinking the other way? It's okay, little girl. We can find it later. So, you said you were looking for presents to give your daddy? Um... Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, I've got a whole lot of neat presents you could go through. With what I've got, I'm sure you might find something for him. Really? Oh, boy. You must be like Santa Claus. Yeah, I I guess you could say that. I'm sort of like Santa Claus. (laughs) So, why don't you come with me and we'll see what all I have. Oh, I don't think I should go any further away. Well, it's not that far, little girl, I promise. Uh, Once we get there, you can pick out a present. I'll bring you right back here. Maybe even uh, help you find your camp. I, uh, really don't think I should. It's getting kind of dark, and I'm sure I can find something somewhere else. No, I think you're gonna come with me. You're not like Santa Claus at all. Put me down right now. Please, let me go. Help! Now, Harold, are you sure you saw her head off this way? Yes, sir, most certain. She said she was going to go off and explore. Explore? What on earth would she be going off to explore? Especially when she's got chores to do. Well, sir, it may be my fault. She came in my workshop asking about Santa Claus and Christmas. And uh, I might have told her a bit about it. Well, damn it, Lily. And damn you, Harold. I just told her to let it go. Are you the one in camp introducing my daughter to all this heresy and chaos? No, 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 sir. I swear, she came in asking, and all I did was tell her how it used to be. I swear. Well, she's two hours late for curfew, and that is not like her at all. I'm sorry, sir. I swear I never meant for any of this. I'm sure she's just caught up having fun. We'll find her, I'm sure of it. Harold, did you hear that? I think that was Lily. I swear that sounded like her voice crying out for help. Uh, Come on, sir. I I think it was this way. Lily! Lily, where are you? Lily! 
Bishop, over here. That's her toy, ain't it? Uh, yes, that most certainly is. Oh, where's my beautiful daughter? My delicate flower, where are you? Lily! Lily! Wait, what's this? Grognak the Barbarian and the Jungle of the Bat Babies. Property of Brian Burton. <sighs> Harold. Yes, sir. Head on back to camp. Gather up the remaining ambassadors. Looks like we're headed to Omega. for checking out this podcast. I really hope you enjoy listening to these stories just as much as I enjoy making them. If you do enjoy this podcast, please let me know by liking, sharing, and even through your comments. Thank you again so much for your support. Remember, there's a place for you at the end. Omega. What's up, everybody? Brian from Omega here, and I wanted to take a moment and talk to you about one of our sponsors. Audiobooks.com. If you're a fan of the show, then I have no doubt that you all love to listen to great stories. And a lot of my inspiration for the stories that I write come from great books like The Road by Cormac McCarthy or the Dark Tower series from Stephen King. But sometimes I don't have time to sit and read, but with audiobooks.com, I really don't have to. With a library of over 200,000 premium titles, I can just research for the one I want, download, and listen as a drive, workout, or just working around the house. And with our sponsorship, you get access to three free audiobooks, including two VIP titles. So click the link in the show notes below to sign up and get started. Audiobooks.com Looking for a Fallout audio drama? It's True Vault Escapades! That's right, follow the death-defying adventures of Detective Walter Camry and his vault girl Bunny as they solve the wasteland's biggest mysteries. From the dramatic Texas prologue to the high-stakes world of New Vegas, Walter and Bunny risk it all to crack everything from murders, slaver syndicates, and corruption at the highest level in post-nuclear America. True Vault Escapades. It's a Fallout show with a detective twist. Look for True Vault Escapades wherever you get your podcasts. Are you interested in keeping up with all the latest gaming news, but you're just too busy? Well, I've got the podcast for you. The Robots Radio Show is a daily gaming news show where I bring you in a quick format all the top news about video games, nerd culture, and even the best deals. You can find the Robots Radio Show on Spotify and Apple and all the different podcatchers. And you can join me live, twitch.tv slash robots radio at around noon Eastern every day. Come talk about game stuff with me. Again, that's the Robots Radio Show. Available everywhere. Hey friends, this is Robots, the creator of the Robots Radio Podcast Network and host of the two original shows on the network, the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. These two shows have rocketed up the iTunes charts. They both together have over 155 star reviews in only a couple of months with bite-sized episodes that take you step-by-step step through the background of the games in the game worlds. They're thought-provoking, well-produced, and a lot of fun. I recommend you go check them out at robotsradio.net or on any podcast, reader, podcatcher, whatever you use, iTunes, Spotify. Again, that's the Fallout Lorecast and the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, available everywhere.
Looking for an RPG podcast that isn't just D&D? Roll to cast is the answer. No, no, wait, sorry. What games have we played so far? Well, we've done Cyberpunk 2020. What does it mean to have a voice? And there's going to be something big coming, Chumba. Hey, if you're listening, I won. I beat you. You suck. There was a time when we were slamming things against our phones and... <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade. Chloe, Sam. You can't use those words. He's going to grab Vincent, press him against the wall. I mesmerize him. This is Adelaide's Anarch movement. First out of your chair, your hand goes to your gun and you draw. Hulk Cthulhu. Told you I had it. <laughs> oh, we've all got the creeps going. I love it so oh, much. Right there. Screechy child. <laughs> my favorite daughter. Maybe after what we just seen, we're feeling a bit trigger happy. And the new Cyberpunk Red. Babe, you're good, but... Better. Thought maybe you might be able to give me a counter off. Thus for Dania. Straight through his neck. I don't see bone either, but I'm not gonna look. My leg's fine. I always knew you wanted to fly, kid. Come find me. Roll to cast. R-O-L-E. A new game every season. Original music. Original stories. Interviews with the creators. And delightful Aussie accents. Listen to us on all good podcatchers. Even support us on Patreon for bonus content. That's Roll to Cast. R-O-L-E. Come discover a new world. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.